you are thinking about buying a second-hand property, not so much a new property, but a second-hand property, I have one piece of advice for you, and it is... Derived from experience of buying property down through the years since 1986 or thereabouts, and that piece of advice is to get a structural survey carried out. Now, a structural survey is a survey carried out by an architect or an engineer or a surveyor, a building professional, who will inspect the property that you're thinking about buying, the second-hand property, and advise you on a number of factors, a number of issues. Before I look at those issues, and before I tell you what factors you should be looking at or asking your surveyor to look at. And before you give instructions to your surveyor, and some of them do good uh, surveys and some of them do shit surveys, quite frankly. But before you do that, the reason that you want a survey carried out is because if you're buying a secondhand property in Ireland, the principle of caveat emptor applies. That means that the buyer must beware. In other words, you're buying a secondhand property you're buying it in the condition that it's in. You can look at it, you can inspect it, you can carry out all your due diligence and your inquiries beforehand. But the bottom line is, you are buying it in the condition that it's in. And that is a fundamental of the contract between buyer and seller in relation to a secondhand property. Now, if you accept that you're gonna buy a property for 200 grand or 300 grand or whatever it is, then three or 400 or 500 quid on a surveyor's report is going to be money well spent and in this video i'm going to explain to you why well the, the main reason is as i say it's it's caveat emptor buyer beware for the sake of four or five hundred quid are you going to run the risk of buying a property that is fundamentally structurally unsound or that there's a problem with for example a boundary or that the services are not contained entirely within the property if it's second hand uh, or if it's a a one-off property say in the countryside and not an estate or a town property maybe a bungalow like where i live then you must check that the services are contained within the boundaries of the site and that septic tank sewerage um, drainage and so on isn't going into the property next door or you need consent now when we go on to the structural survey you're going to need as i say an architect a surveyor or an engineer to carry out the survey there's a number of things that I would suggest you ask him or her to do in order to get a perfect report. I'm not saying you're going to get a perfect report, but I am saying that the three or four things I'm going to mention to you now are worth looking at. The very first thing is the structural soundness of the property. Is there any sign of structural deterioration or degradation? Is there any sign of pyrite? Is there a sign of cracking that's of concern or is any cracking that may be present simply settlement cracks? There's a huge difference. Your surveyor will know this, but the bottom line is he should be explaining to you and giving an opinion to you about the structural soundness and the structural integrity of the property. The second thing you need to be thinking about or asking your surveyor rather to think about and have a look at as he carries out his inspection is to observe if there was any work carried out, any extensions, for example, any porches, any kitchens built at the back, any conservatories, any sunrooms built that would perhaps require planning permission, that would not be exempt from planning permission, and that you, he can then tell you, look, at there was a development carried out there in a few a few years ago or whatever, and you'd want to get your solicitor to check out their planning permission. That is the sort of good information, good intelligence, good feedback that you want from your surveyor. So structural integrity, number one. Two, anything to do with planning, anything to do with development, anything to do with building regulations. For example, if it's a dormer bungalow and the attic is converted, the, if the surveyor carries out the report and the inspection correctly, he should be able at a glance to be able to tell you that the development in the attic either complies with building regulations or it doesn't from the point of view of being habitable space. 
it may only be storage space, but it may be sold to you as habitable space. That's something that needs to be checked out. So any conversion of an attic, an attic room, two rooms, is there proper egress, fire window egress, for example. Your surveyor should be able to tell you that. And he should know fairly handy as to whether questions need to be raised by your solicitor from the other solicitor to satisfy uh, you and, and the solicitor about the building regulations. The third aspect of a perfect structural survey would be the boundaries. Checking that the boundaries on the site correspond with the map or folio plan that's attached to the folio. So the folio is the official acknowledgement and the official document proving ownership of the property and it's guaranteed by the property registration authority. That folio has a map or a filed plan attached to it. Does the boundaries on that folio or filed plan correspond with the boundaries on the ground? If not, then there may be a problem in relation to potential disputes with the neighbour down the line. There may be a problem in relation to selling on the property if a deed of rectification is required to rectify the boundaries. Again, that's the third thing that I would suggest that you put to your surveyor. Ask him just to check the boundaries. It's not a big deal. He should be able to do it handy enough and he should be able to flag up to you if there's a discrepancy between the boundaries around the property on the ground and the actual boundary as marked on the file plan or folio. The fourth thing is relevant to a one-off house in the countryside and not so much an estate house. A one-off house in the countryside is going to have its own well, its own water supply and it's going to have its own sewerage treatment plant. It is essential that those services, which are essential services, are contained within the boundaries of the property. So out the back of my place here, there is a sewage treatment system. It's uh, registered with the uh, local authority or with the Department of the Environment or whoever it's supposed to be registered with. But it's not actually possible to see under the ground as to see where the drainage goes. And there is a percolation and drainage area. So one thing that your surveyor should be able to look at and give you an opinion on, it won't be definitive, but it will be an opinion, it should be a good opinion, as to whether the services are entirely contained within the boundaries of the site and the property you're buying or not. Because if they're not, then the likes of the sewerage, the percolation area and the drainage area, it may well be discharging out onto the property next door. And if that's the case, then you should have the consent of the adjoining landowner. If you don't have the consent of the adjoining landowner, again, that could be a problem down the line because in five or 10 years time, when you go to sell your property, you may find that a question is raised. You then have to buy some sort of a right of way or an easement from the adjoining landowner to allow you to go out there to clean out the septic tank or whatever. And that's going to cost you a few bob, particularly if you've on sale agreed on your property and the adjoining landowner is not on very friendly terms with you. So they are four things that I believe you should ask your structural surveyor to carry out or to have a look at if they're going to give you a perfect structural survey report. But I would in any event recommend that you get a structural survey carried out, particularly if it's a second hand house, because you really don't want to run the risk of spending two or three hundred grand on a house, pay a buttload of interest to the bank over the years by way of a mortgage repayments and end up with a property that has some significant structural problem that you fail to identify at the outset because you wouldn't spend three or four or five hundred quid for a structural survey. So the structural survey, in my view, is important it's very important it's a big investment for you buying a property for you know many many years to come and you really want to ensure that you understand what it is you're buying and that any issues or, or problems are flagged up it is possible as well that if the structural survey flags up problems it is possible that you could negotiate uh, with the vendor on foot of the report that you've got 
And um, one other thing you need to ensure is that the structural survey is not to be confused with a valuation report that you need to carry out for the bank. So the bank, as part of the mortgage package, is going to require a valuation. That is an entirely different situation. It's a different report. That's going to be a drive-by by some auctioneer who will carry out an analysis, a fairly cursory analysis probably, but will look at the records of properties bought and sold in the area, look at comparable properties and give a valuation. But that valuation report for the bank is not a structural report. You need to be clear on that. Hope you find this video useful. If you do, give it a thumbs up down below. Thank you for supporting my YouTube channel. Thanks for the likes, the shares, the comments, and the very best of luck in buying the property that you, uh, buying a good property that will serve you well for, uh, for years to come.